I bet you agree with me that disagreement, conflict, confrontation, these are pretty unpleasant experiences. And they are, I think for most people, especially if we have to have a difficult conversation or confrontation with someone we consider a friend or a fellow leader. Calling out a friend can actually be an act of love and truth, an act of justice. Doing what is right sometimes can be costly, even uncomfortable. That's why the Bible talks about justice a lot. It's a major theme in the Bible, and it has to do with how we conduct ourselves in relationship with one another. Treating other people with respect as image bearers and seeking what is right, doing what is right. And sometimes doing what is right is the least favorable option because it's going to be uncomfortable, right? It may require a disagreement or a confrontation or a challenge with someone that we may love and care for and who may feel disappointed that we're holding them accountable. Today, we're going to look at a situation where Paul, as an act of love and truth, he had to confront Peter, who was a leader with him in the gospel, because Peter was doing something that was unjust. Paul writes the letter of Galatians with one main theme, which is to call out an injustice he was seeing in the early church. Let's read today's passage and see what happened in Galatians 2, from verse 11 to verse 14. But when Cephas came to Antioch, I opposed him to his face because he stood condemned. For he regularly ate with Gentiles before certain men came from James. However, when they came, he withdrew and separated himself, because he feared those from the circumcision party. Then the rest of the Jews joined in his hypocrisy, so that even Barnabas was led astray by their hypocrisy. But when I saw that they were deviating from the truth of the gospel, I told Cephas in front of everyone, If you who are a Jew live like a Gentile and not like a Jew, how can you compel Gentiles to live like Jews? As you can see, Peter was spending time with the Gentiles, eating with them and enjoying time with them, which by the way, Jews and Gentiles had very different diets, so it was a big deal for a Jewish person to go and have meals with a Gentile. Therefore, they were sharing not just the food and their customs, but the fact that they were both united in Jesus, and that's what was bringing them, this Jew and this Gentile, together. Normally, they did not come together. However, some Jewish men who came from James, it says, this was from Jerusalem, when they did, Peter withdrew from the Gentiles. You know, it's like a friend who's hanging out with you and you're having a really good time. And then someone else comes along and they separate from you because they're embarrassed to be with you. Ouch. That's essentially what Peter did. He withdrew and separated himself. Why? Because he feared those who had come from Jerusalem. It says from the circumcision party, which means the Jews who were circumcised were judging the Gentiles for not being circumcised. That was a marking of what it meant to be part of the people of God. But through Jesus, even that was eliminated because now circumcision was from the heart. Believing in Jesus is the only grounds for justification. The only way to be made right with God is faith in Christ. So here we see Peter separating himself from the Gentiles. He made faith in Christ not to be enough. Like you had to become a certain way. You had to be like all the other Jews. Peter was a strong leader, and it says the rest of the Jews, they joined in his hypocrisy. They joined in his behavior. Sometimes we as leaders, we can lead people into injustice. And Paul is calling Peter out on this. It says that even Barnabas was being led astray by his hypocrisy. Here's another fellow co-worker with Peter and Paul, and Paul has to do something about this. He writes this seething letter calling up Peter for his hypocrisy so that it would be very clear that faith in Christ would be the only, the only way to make ourselves right with God. That's the whole point of this letter. It's not to treat believers in two different classes, like there's a second class believer and a first class believer. No, we're all one in Christ. Remember, in many of Paul's letters, he speaks a lot about having unity in Christ. He emphasized the unity of the body in Christ over and above anything else including sometimes petty disagreements, which we can see him writing this in the letters he wrote to the Corinthian church. Here he is saying, no, we are even united despite our cultural differences. And Peter was sending people in the wrong direction. Paul calls out his friend as an act of love and truth in order to bring justice to the Gentiles who were in his care and they were being mistreated. Paul was not an enemy of Peter and Peter was not an enemy of Paul. They were friends. They were working together. 
Yet Peter's actions would be hurtful and actually very confusing to those new Gentile believers. And of course, we see even to Barnabas, who is a fellow leader. But what does that have to do with us as leaders? It's not wrong or selfish or even prideful to correct a brother or a sister in Christ, even if they're also a fellow leader. In fact, it is wrong to stay silent in these situations because there are other people, vulnerable people, teachable people, who might believe lies about the character of God and the goodness of Jesus Christ. Godly leaders, we must learn to grow from correction. When someone holds us accountable, we have an opportunity to grow from it. And as leaders, we need to be willing to speak up when we see an injustice take place. In this case, an injustice was about the faith. But really in our lives, whether it's in our family or at work, in our small groups, sometimes the injustice has to do with how people are treating one another. And God calls us to act justly. One of the most beautiful passages about this is in Micah 6, 8. And it says, The Lord requires this of you, to act justly, love faithfully, and walk humbly with your God. God cares a lot about us doing the right thing for each other, even if it causes us to uphold the truth in justice by confronting a friend or calling out their behavior or even having a conflict with them. When we're willing to do this for each other, we can remind ourselves of the truth so we can lead with justice with all people. Let's pray. Lord, we want to be leaders that do justice, to do right for each other. We need to be willing, Lord, to be confronted when we do the wrong things. And we need to be willing to confront others. Give us the courage and the wisdom to do that in love and in truth, as Paul did, with passion, Lord, because we don't want people to be victimized by those who are leading in the wrong way. And we don't want to victimize others if we're leading in the wrong way. So, Lord, bring people to us to hold us accountable and help us be good friends, loving friends that hold others accountable as well, that you might be glorified and that your truth would be the highest thing seen by all. We pray this in Jesus' name, amen. As you can see, we are passionate about character-led leadership. I'm excited to share with you that we've created a special course for you on seven practices we believe will help you overcome your leadership struggles. There you'll find seven short videos and receive an ebook with additional resources. You don't have to succumb to a character crisis as we see so many do today. So visit InezFranklin.com to sign up for this self-guided free course. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit that notification bell. Also subscribe to our podcast. Visit InezFranklin.com to subscribe and receive by email this devotional and our weekly blog every Monday morning. And this way, you won't miss a thing. Thank you for joining us today for this devotional. I pray that the peace and grace of Jesus Christ be with you today and all week long. God bless you.